Hi, this video is on the testing cycle. Here we'll go through the waterfall SDLC and the V model. This video is also part two of the manual testing training. So let us start with the waterfall SDLC. SDLC stands for software development life cycle. What is the requirement of following a software development life cycle when developing software? Well, most software is uh, quite complex, so it is not simple to go directly from the requirements to the software and be able to use it. So obviously the problem has to be broken down into simpler parts. Any STLC gives us a way in which we can divide up the activities of software development into individual activities and those activities are done one after the other or in parallel as the case may be. So the software development life cycle is really a sequence or a set of activities that have to be done one after the other or maybe with a bit of an overlap so that the software can be developed with quality and meeting the requirements. Sometimes instead of SDLC, people refer to it as the model. So you may have heard about the waterfall model or the iterative model or the agile model. A model really means that uh, it is uh, a simplification of the overall process. So instead of uh, specifying the entire software development process in detail, the process is uh, abstracted so that only the major activities in the process are shown. So let us uh, start with understanding the waterfall SDLC. Well, the very first activity that is done in the waterfall SDLC is the requirements analysis. Now requirements are obtained from the users and there are many different ways in which requirements can be elicited from the users like uh, asking them questions or uh, asking them to fill up a form or uh, maybe look at the high level requirements that they may have uh, as part of uh, the project business requirements or to show them some uh, mocked up screens and uh, ask their inputs on those. A very popular way of uh, capturing the requirements is uh, with the help of uh, use cases which uh, walk through a typical scenario of what the users would like to achieve in the system. So in the case of, uh, for example, an e-commerce enabled website. So there can be the major requirements around searching the products in that website, the shopping cart functionality of the website, then some administrative uh, functionality in the website. So all the requirements are analyzed and uh, documented and uh, the reason is to find out each and every requirement that is supposed to be there in the system and also to make sure that the requirements are uh, unambiguous that means the requirements are very clear there are no conflicting requirements and also the requirements are testable meaning that uh, it should be possible to uh, test out the requirement there should be no ambiguity for example it should not say that uh, the display has to be pleasant. It has to say that uh, the display has to be simple with no more than 10 controls in, in any one single screen. So the output of the requirement analysis phase is the requirements document. This is the main requirements document of the entire system. The next task in the waterfall SDLC is the system design. So earlier phase of requirement analysis resulted in the requirements document. Now the team goes about the task of designing the overall system. So what is going to be just at a high level, what will be the system, what will be the different major parts of the system. That means uh, what will be the software architecture, what will be the main 
parts of the user interface of the system what kind of data structures it will use for example will it use a database or will it get data from web services what kind of major reports are required from the system the system design can also be uh, shown in the form of an entity relationship diagram an ERD which shows the major entities uh, in the system for example in the case of the e-commerce uh, shopping website the main entities can be the visitor to the website the customer of the website it can be product it can be an order so these are the main entities in the system those are designed in the system design phase so the system design phase produces the entire software architecture and the software architecture is not only a diagram but it is also a description and that description is called the system specification it is a kind of a high level design now once the design is complete then coding can start so the coding is based on the software architecture that has been designed and in coding the actual software code is written so the software itself will follow whatever software architecture has been decided and whatever system specification has been decided along with database uh, structures required database tables required ui specification required report specification required etc and coding is done with by the developers the developers look at the system specification and create the software so the major tasks in coding are the implementation of interfaces for example a particular module uh, in the software for example the shopping cart module has to interact with the order module so how they are going to interact with each other what kind of data they will pass all this is implemented in code also the logic of the process is implemented in the code the user interface specification that is uh, already there the code is written to interact with the user interface that means how to populate the user interface to show to the user the code is written for that and how to understand the user's data given in the user interface and use it in the application similarly code is also written to interact with the database so whether it is fetching some data from the database or writing the user's data to the database that code is written also the code includes error messages in case the user has performed any incorrect or uh, uh, operation that is uh, not allowed and the output of the coding phase is the software next is testing once the software is uh, created the it is tested and there are different kinds of tests that are there some of the tests for example the unit tests are done by the developers so the developers uh, test the logic of their functions how the functions interact with other functions and so on then there is integration testing in which the developers test how one module interacts with another module and then there are some tests done by the testers such as system testing in which they take the system specification and uh, they test against the system specification and also there is acceptance testing in which the users or representatives of users actually take the entire system and test it from the original requirements document that was created in the requirements analysis phase so this is the overall waterfall sdlc now let us look at the v model the v model is uh, an extension of uh, the sdl waterfall sdlc it gives uh, some more details in the v model it is uh, important to remember that uh, the activities of uh, the sdlc or uh, the software development process are from left to right so first we have the requirements analysis then there is system design then there is coding 
and all these activities are the activities of development so the requirement analysis produces the requirements document the system design produces the system specification and the coding produces the software now continuing on once the coding is complete the developers do the unit testing so they test out each and every unit of the work the unit is the smallest testable part that they have written so it can be a function or it can be a class it's basically a small piece of code and the idea is to test out each and every statement of that piece of code and also to see that the data is uh, that is passed into the unit it is uh, accepted correctly by the unit and the output of the unit is correct for example if there is a function to add the items in the shopping cart so the unit can be the function it requires the input the input are going to be the line items of different items in the shopping cart and it produces the output of the total price uh, uh, total price and the addition of all the line items prices should be correct all this is validated by the developers in the unit testing once the unit testing is successfully complete the next step is for the integration testing so in integration testing the focus is on testing the interfaces between the units so for example if there is uh, the shopping cart unit and the uh, uh, and the order unit so whether the shopping cart unit transmits the correct data to the orders unit and uh, the orders unit gives back the correct acknowledgement to the shopping cart unit all this integration is tested between the units once the integration testing is successfully complete next comes the system testing and system testing if you remember from the slide on the waterfall sdlc produces the system specification so system testing is done by the testers the testers use the system specification to write the test cases for system testing and those test cases are executed on the software which has successfully completed integration testing so one important thing to keep in mind is that unit testing and integration testing are more technical types of testing and uh, that is the reason commonly developers do unit testing and integration testing system testing and subsequent test levels like acceptance testing are done by testers or other people so after the system testing is uh, successfully complete uh, uh, we just uh, move on in the process if not then the defects are fixed and uh, the system test is uh, repeated so after system testing we have the acceptance testing the acceptance testing is based on the original requirements document that was uh, created so acceptance testing is either done by testers or users when testers do the acceptance testing they act on behalf of the end users so this is the overall v model on the left hand side we can see these are the activities of development requirement analysis system design and coding and on the right hand side we have the testing activities unit testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing overall it is in the shape of a v that is why it is called a v model and uh, the activities of the v model are from left to right so first requirements analysis is done then system design and coding is done then unit testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing the coding is at the level of unit testing because the unit testing is done on the code that is created the integration testing is on the level of system design because the system design is where the interfaces between the units are decided the system testing is also at the level of system design because system testing is done with respect to the system specification and then we have acceptance testing acceptance testing is at the level of requirements analysis because acceptance testing is based on 
the requirements document so this is uh, the overall v model we move from left to right requirements analysis system design coding unit testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing and also you can see that uh, there is an overlap between the phases requirements analysis and system design it is not that once the requirements analysis is complete for each and every requirement only then the system design can begin no there can be an overlap once the requirements analysis is complete for a particular part of the system that particular part of the system design can begin so it is really an overlapping process and same holds true for system design and coding as soon as uh, some system design is ready coding can begin on that particular part of the system coding and unit testing is uh, one after the other and here in unit testing we can see unit testing and integration testing can overlap so the units that are complete and uh, whose uh, unit testing is successfully complete integration testing can be done on those and same for the overlap between system testing and uh, acceptance testing so that is about uh, the waterfall sdlc and uh, the v model so i hope uh, you, it is uh, clear to you what is uh, an sdlc software development life cycle basically it is a set of activities that defines or guides us what are the major activities that we should perform in order to build quality software and it is also called a model because it is an abstraction or a simplification of the activities uh, we are supposed to perform we saw the waterfall sdlc waterfall sdlc has four major activities requirements analysis system design coding and testing and uh, v model really extends the waterfall sdlc by showing the activities and the relationship between them so in v model we can see there is relationship between coding and unit testing there is a relationship between system design and integration testing system design and system testing and also requirements analysis and acceptance testing so that is all for this video i hope uh, it was useful to you see you in the next video thank you